This video is made possible by Blue Apron. You've heard me talk about Blue Apron before. They make food. Well, technically, you make the food, but they provide the ingredients and the instructions for putting those ingredients together into something that actually tastes good. Now, I often face the classic first world problem of I could order food, but it has too many calories. I mean, there's pizza, Chinese, Indian, and then I usually relent and end up in a spiral of horrible self-loathing. Just kidding, or am I? Look, if you hate self-loathing, you'll love Blue Apron. You choose the meals you want, and then Blue Apron ships them to your door. Plus, all the ingredients are super fresh. They have these neat delivery boxes. There's no weird tomatoes in there with those soft patches that you don't really want to touch. There's no more sniffing the chicken that's been in the fridge for a bit too long and thinking, that smells a bit funny. Should I risk this? Look, Blue Apron sent us beef curry spiced rice and fiesta steak fajitas. Just kidding, I know that they're actually pronounced fajitas. They were super tasty and there's not a billion oil-soaked calories in sight. All meals can be prepared in 40 minutes or less, and many of the recipes require only 20 to 30 minutes to complete. The first 50 people to sign up will get $50 off their first two weeks of Blue Apron. Just click the link in the description below. Blue Apron. If you hate self-loathing, you'll love it. So, few companies have a rival as fierce and as long-standing as PepsiCo and Coca-Cola. In their never-ending battle for soda market dominance, each company has gone to some spectacular lengths to screw over the other. Arguably the most fiendishly genius move of all time was made by Coca-Cola in the early 1990s, a move which basically involved intentionally releasing a terrible product purely to try and screw over by association a similar product released by Pepsi. The genesis for this tale began in the early 1990s, during what is referred to in the marketing world as the clear craze. In a nutshell, for whatever reason, many companies began releasing clear versions of their products using marketing buzzwords like pure and clean to advertise them to the general public. A company recognized as the industry leader in this regard was the soap giant Ivory, who among other things released a clear version of their dish soap in the early 1990s. Ivory Clear was advertised with rather questionably accurate slogans like Ivory attacks the grease, not the natural oils in your skin. The idea of clear products was quickly used in a diverse and eclectic range of products including Zima Clear Malt, a clear citrus beer, Menon Crystal Clean deodorant, and perhaps most bizarre of all, Amico Crystal Clear Gasoline. As you might have guessed given the lack of ubiquitous see-through products on your local supermarket shelves, most of these products either failed miserably or quietly faded into obscurity when the clear craze went full meta and disappeared. This brings us to Crystal Pepsi, which was devised by then COO of PepsiCo, David Novak, in 1992. The soda was virtually identical in composition to their flagship product, sans the caramel coloring that's used to give so many sodas their distinctive brown hue. Novak's idea was to market the soda like other products released during the clear craze and hope consumers would equate it to being pure. Obviously, the thought behind this is that then people would think it was healthier compared to regular Pepsi. Of course, as sodas are want to be, Crystal Pepsi was still absolutely terrible for you. For example, a 20-ounce bottle of Crystal Pepsi still contained around 69 grams of sugar, or about 16 teaspoons worth, which is the same amount that you find in normal Pepsi. Taste-wise, Crystal Pepsi is extremely similar to regular Pepsi, however, fans of the product claimed that they could still tell the difference. Nevertheless, the slight taste difference was brought up during the product's design phase, with one bottler at a Pepsi plant telling Novak, David, it's a great idea, and we think we can make it great, but it needs to taste more like Pepsi. If you call it Pepsi, people will expect it to taste like Pepsi. Novak decided to ignore these concerns and presumably also ignored the fact that by saying Crystal Pepsi was better because it wasn't brown, they were literally advertising that all their brown drinks weren't good for you. Despite all of this Crystal Pepsi, it was rushed into production. Initially, it seemed that Novak's gut feeling was correct, and trials in cities like Denver and Dallas in early 1992 garnered positive feedback from customers. Encouraged by this, PepsiCo eventually rolled out the product nationwide in 1993. In their initial advertising blitz for Crystal Pepsi, Pepsi paid millions for a minute-long Super Bowl ad to celebrate its launch. The ad, which can be viewed in all its glory on YouTube, touts Crystal Pepsi as the drink for 
right now and is full of pseudo intellectual quotes like right now nature's inventing better stuff than science and right now only wildlife needs preservatives also because subtlety apparently died in the early 1990s the entire ad is set in time to the van halen song right now they followed this up by spending a total of around 40 million dollars that's about 70 million in today's dollars pushing the product in broader advertising initial response was very positive including crystal pepsi quickly capturing almost one percent of the soda market just as a reference point this is good for sales of almost half a billion dollars or close to a billion dollars today if you adjust for inflation nevertheless in just over a year the product was dead the last batch in the initial run was shipped in early 1994. It should be noted that since this time, Pepsi has periodically re-released the product for limited runs as something of a marketing stunt, most recently having done so in August of 2018. As to why the product flopped so spectacularly, this seems to center around basic human psychology. To begin with, it was noted that because the only other mainstream sodas out there that were clear were citrus-based, like 7-Up and Sprite, many consumers initially thought Crystal Pepsi must be the same type of drink. When they noted it tasted almost exactly like Pepsi, most simply went back to drinking the original brown version of the product. In essence here, Pepsi were going against a literal century-old association that cola should be brown. This is a real problem, as noted by marketing professor Carl Murray at the University of Alberta. In his study, the role of arousal in congruity-based product evaluation, it was demonstrated that when people are presented with products that are otherwise exactly as expected, except just changing one very apparent thing, like the color, they actually show genuine psychological signs of anxiety. Thus, things like a drink that tastes exactly as people expect a brown cola to taste but is clear literally makes people's pulses rise and their perspiration increase. Nevertheless, as noted thanks to a rather massive marketing push, when Crystal Pepsi was falling short of Pepsi's hope that it would be a billion dollar brand needing to capture at least 2% of the market to achieve that figure in 1990s dollars, it was still doing reasonably well out of the gate. And this is where a little more psychology and PepsiCo's chief rival, Coca-Cola, enter the picture. Thanks to the launch of Diet Coke, Coca-Cola had a diet drink on their hands that had more or less faded into obscurity, and that would be Tab. Significant to Coca-Cola's plans here was the fact that diet drinks in general at this time were not terribly popular and were otherwise generally considered something that only women drank. In fact, this association was so strong that Tab cans themselves were made pink and advertisements eventually solely targeted women with such statements as, Be a shape he won't forget. Tab can help you stay on his mind. This negative association with diet drinks among half the population and brands that Coca-Cola didn't really care about got the wheels turning among executives at Coca-Cola, with the result being a rather ingenious idea that would hurt sales of the upstart Crystal Pepsi. Launched as a direct competitor to Crystal Pepsi in December of 1993, Tab Clear was later described by former Pepsi executive and at the time head of marketing for Coca-Cola, Sergio Zyman, as a product to the company in intentionally sent to die, almost purely to spite Pepsi. In a nutshell, this was just the exact same drink as Tab Sans Caramel Coloring. The company also removed the caffeine from the product, another move that wasn't terribly popular with consumers. Then they very prominently featured the fact that the product was caffeine and sugar-free right there on the can. Naturally, both being clear colas, most stores stocked Crystal Pepsi and Tab Clear very close to one another. All of this combined had Coca-Cola's executives hoping that consumers would similarly assume that Crystal Pepsi was a diet drink and also caffeine-free. If accepted by the public, these two factors would virtually guarantee that Crystal Pepsi would never be a mainstream drink, no matter how hard Pepsi tried to make it a thing. In the end, Zyman called the launch of Tab Clear a suicidal mission from day one, and in an interview for the book Killing Giants, 10 Strategies to Topple the Goliath in Your Industry, he gleefully noted, within three or five months, Tab Clear was dead, and so was Crystal Pepsi. And now for a bonus fact. Zima, the clear alternative to beer, was made via filtering otherwise normally brewed beer through charcoal and then adding some citrus flavoring. Unfortunately for Coors, the makers of Zima, consumers very quickly began to see the drink as effeminate, with it achieving only a niche market, particularly popular among college-aged women. To get around this, Coors launched a series of ads featuring men doing manly things while drinking Zima, but it didn't work. Otherwise, beer-guzzling men treated Zima like a product that was made purely out of estrogen. Later, they managed to salvage the product slightly by pushing it as essentially an alcohol version of Sprite or 7-Up, but it was still 
only ever a niche product. So I really hope you found that video interesting. If you did, please do give us a thumbs up below and don't forget to subscribe. Also, don't forget to check out that special deal with Blue Apron. You can find a link below. Just click it, check it out. And as always, thank you for watching.